Hi, this is Pepper Lewis. Like you, I was surprised about all the events related to the birds around the world and how they've been falling from the skies. And I want to thank you for sending the emails of concern, the phone calls and the postings on Facebook. I want you to know that I received them all and sat with them with Gaia asking for a response or an answer to help us with our understanding. And so I wanted to bring that to you here now in this audio format, which is the soonest way that I could think of to give you as many details as possible. And I hope to be able to follow that up with a video sometime next week. So please look for it on YouTube, and I'll offer you more details upon that as soon as I have them. Here's Gaia. I bid you good day. I ask you to orient yourselves, or better put, to reorient yourselves directionally. Imagine that now, before you are able to look forward or to think about the next future moment, just before you are able to do that, a moment strikes in which for that moment you become omnidirectional, or in essence part of every potential future, so much so that the next step can be in almost any direction. Well, in one way you might imagine that to be very liberating, very freeing but it can also be very confusing because in one moment the potential future that you know now becomes almost invisible in favor of all potential futures. And so you are uncertain how to take the next step, perhaps, or even how to take the next breath, or in this case how the beat of the heart, then, is silenced and stopped. In essence, this is what has taken place, and not only for the birds, mind you, for they are but an example of all of life. It is for humanity to take note as well. To be specific, then, the earth passes through or receives, at times, what can best be called a shock wave. Well, if you know already that there are earthquakes, eruptions of different sorts, and even rogue waves in the ocean, caused by circumstances and energies that move waters and elements in ways beyond considered normal, well, the same is true, then, of the other elements. In this case, the same is true of the element of air, and the pockets of energetic air that create almost what could be a sonic boom, but one that exists beyond the sound barrier as you know it now, beyond the audible range. That which takes place beyond the audible range then becomes a shock wave. And this wave of energy moves through the earth or the earth moves around the wave to encircle it. In order to imagine this, fathom, then, that a thread passes through the eye of the needle. But if you were the thread, you would not say, Oh, I am a thread passing through the eye of the needle. Instead, you may say, A needle, or the eye of the needle, is encircling what I am. In this case, then, both the shock wave passes through the fields of the earth, within and without, 
and the earth at the same time encircles or absorbs that field as well. This is what has taken place. It is not new to the earth, this I tell you. However, this would be of high magnitude, comparatively speaking, just as you measure your earthquakes in magnitude, shock waves of this nature can also be measured, and this one to a high degree then. But it is not a new phenomenon. It is, however, one that will more than likely take place more often now, particularly because the earth and how it is poised at this time. And an intense field of energy disorients almost everything upon the earth. But in this case, particularly because of how it moved through the fields, all of the birds then that were in flight at the time were the ones most affected. Hence you have seen the falling from the skies in this way. Those that in some way were attached to the earth, be it to a branch, be it to a line, be it to the earth, these were not as affected, they were not as disoriented. I tell you as well that other animals were also moved or reoriented based upon this shock wave, as were certain plant. This particular form of shock wave is strong enough, in essence, to move a season, to shift a season's arrival by as much as one day, by as much as a 24-hour cycle. This particular shock wave lasted approximately 12 hours, enough time that it was able to move through several of the time zones of the Earth as you measure them. Enough so that it was able to disorient at times those that also measure their heartbeats by pacemakers. And yes, the more frail are more affected than others. Those with a frail nervous system were affected more than others. And the birds affected more than others because they are magnetic in nature. They orient themselves magnetically and, in essence, they lost their orientation. Without that, they literally forgot to flap their wings. They forgot that their nature is to continue in flight once they are already airborne. Thus, literally, they were shocked out of the sky their hearts stopped beating and they fell to the ground. Areas around the earth, some of them are more subjective to these waves than other areas, just as there are certain oceans that are known to be more turbulent than others. To some degree, the earth is able to absorb some of the shock well, in much the same way as a shock absorber on a vehicle would function, the earth is able to do the same. Another example, be it even in your own movements, as you pair yourself with athletic shoes, asking that these absorb some of the shock so that your body need not do so, there are aspects of the earth that are able to do the same. But because of the nature of this particular shock, be it a strong one, it was not able to absorb it all. Therefore, the more frail species felt this as well. As has been said, there will be more of these, and this will be addressed in a further subject, as time and circumstance allows recordings and offerings of this nature to you. It is not exactly that which can be forewarned, for... The shock wave itself determines its movement, determines how it interacts with the other elements, its length of activity, and how much of that the earth can absorb. But indeed, the earth is repositioning itself now relative to the cosmos, relative to the center of the universe, and relative to all things upon and beyond the earth. 
It is a time of anomalies, and anomalies such as these and others will continue to make their way to the forefront, newsworthy, we could say. It will be then reflected within the other elements and the kingdoms as well. The earth is now moving from the Piscean age, known of the waters or represented astrologically by the waters, into the age of Aquarius, the water bearer, but the element of air. Therefore, for the most part, you will see that more of the historic markers or changes will be in these areas, water and air, in the ways that these come together or in the ways they appear to be in conflict, such as a hurricane. In these ways, then, while they cannot be predicted, they can be expected, and this year, 2011, will bring its share of these as well. Note that the earth, in essence, is redirecting itself and everything that is upon it as well. Therefore, take this, then, not as a caution, but as an encouragement in ways in which you can connect with your own being, with the earth as it is represented, and with change, with shift. Let you be conscious where you can, let you be aware of environment in the ways that you can. Indeed, until the next moment brings us together, we will allow all things to be as they are and celebrate those things that can be and call upon the greater moments to align with all beings. I bid you good day. <laughs>